temperatures. It is currently 2.25 in the morning. We are going to be going on a road trip. We better hit the road because it's a couple hours away. So we're going to get started. I'll show you my setup here that we've got right now. We've got our cooler, our battery backup, charging port, a mattress blow up, uh, clothes, film gear. We're going to be documenting the entire adventure and it's going to be awesome. We are actually going to be spending the night at a campsite. So we'll actually get outside into God's creation. And then on our way back home, I've got a special surprise for you. But I don't want to spoil it, so let's hit the road. Got some beef jerky here at Bucky's. Not sponsored, but man, look at that sunrise right there. God is just so good. I mean, there's no way you can look at that and say that God doesn't exist. That's pretty cool. But back on the road. Made it to the campsite. I'm going to show you our setup. We're actually going to set up the tent and get ready for the night. It's starting to get dark out here, so let's get to it. I don't know if you can see it right now, but there are a couple fireflies out here. You can kind of see the soft glow in the darkness. Fireflies are actually really cool. They actually use that glow to communicate with one another. The males are usually the ones flying in the air, and the females are down below in the grass. And God used that flash pattern to allow them to communicate. And that's how they mate. God is so cool. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, we made it through the night, and let me tell you, that was actually pretty nice. That was pretty comfortable. It did rain a little bit, but we made it okay. Our tent was completely protected us, so we're all nice and dry. All right, we're going to get out of here. Let's set up, uh, get ready for breakfast. We got breakfast. I'll show you what we got. We got a protein cereal. It's pretty good. We also have some bread that has some homemade jam on it. I'm excited for this. And we've got some coffee. This is the Black Rifle Coffee Company, the Triple Shot Espresso. I've never tried this one before, so this is going to be pretty neat. Uh, not sponsored, but guys, please sponsor us. Um, Anyways, we're gonna eat this up and drink this, and then we're going to pack up camp and head out. So before we head out today, I just wanted to spend some time in God's Word, and I came across Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, which says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Now, this verse has really stuck out to me because, I mean, it says, Call to me, and I will answer you. Now, let me tell you, there are a lot of times where, you know, I've called to God, I've asked him for something, and it feels like he doesn't answer. But then I have to remember that, you know, God is outside of time. So, my idea of slowness is like nothing to God. I mean, God has seen all of human history, and he can do it that quick. So, like, he knows everything that's going to happen. He knows everything that I'm going to do. He knows everything I'm going to ask already, even before I ask it. And I have the audacity 
to ask him why he doesn't answer me. He already has. He already knows what's going to happen. He knows what he's going to do. And I have the, the gall to just question him. And so this verse kind of really sticks out to me because it says that he will answer. May not be when I think it will be, or may not be the answer that I, I, that I want. But I know that he is going to answer my question. Um, it doesn't matter what I think the answer should be, but he is going to, to answer. And ultimately, it will be for the best. You know, it says in, in Genesis, it says, you know, what you intend for evil, God intended for good. Joseph was saying this to his brothers. So God can take even the things that appear to be evil or things that are evil and turn it around for good. Like that is the power of our God. That is so, so cool. So I have no doubt that when I call to God and I ask him for something, he will answer and it's going to be for the best. Now, the second part is pretty cool. It says, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. God is like literally giving wisdom. It says elsewhere in the Bible, uh, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. But then the verse continues, it says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Such a person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. They are uns Such a person is unstable and double-minded in all they do. So it's, um, I think that's a direct quote. We'll see. I'm going to look it up and find out. <laughs> um, <coughs> but basically this verse is saying that if you ask God for wisdom, he will give you wisdom. But you have to believe that he's actually going to do it. And that, you know, this is what this verse is saying. It's basically saying that, He's going to answer us, and he's going to tell us great and unsearchable things we do not know. Well, that's literally giving us wisdom. So when you pray and ask God for something, don't be afraid to ask for wisdom. In fact, I encourage you, anytime you ask God for something, ask for wisdom as well. And also ask, that, ask for the wisdom to understand and to discern what his answer is. So it's going to be awesome, you guys, I'm telling you. God is so good, he does not do anything without a reason, and he always does everything for our good. So, he knows what we need, it may not, we may not, it may not seem like it to us, but ultimately it is for our good. We just have to look for that good and have the discernment and the wisdom to see it. So, I encourage you today, don't be afraid to ask God for what you need, but also ask for wisdom and discernment, and also listen for his answer. Also be patient with it because he doesn't answer within our time and we just got to wait on his timing because his timing is the best. All right, you guys, let's pack up. Let's get on the road. After yourself, guys, pick up the trash. You guys almost thought I forgot you. have made it to our special surprise. I am here in Dayton, Tennessee. And if you know anything about the history of Dayton, Tennessee, this is where the Scopes Monkey Trial took place. Right behind me, 
is the actual courthouse where the future of America was decided. This case, the Scopes Monkey Trial, is what allowed evolution to be taught in our public schools and ultimately changed the course of American history forever. of the Scopes Monkey Trial actually dates to a few months prior. In fact, March of 1925, an act was published known as the Butler Act, and this prevented the theory of evolution to be taught in public schools. The act basically stated that it was illegal to teach that humans came from lower life forms. Now you may ask me, well, doesn't this go against the freedom of religion? mentioned in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and my answer to you is actually no. You see, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution states that it is illegal for Congress to make a, to preference a certain religion, to make a law preferring, you know, one religion over the other. This was a state act. Now, unless the state, the Constitution of Tennessee states specifically during that time period that it was illegal, then no, this was a perfectly lawful act. Here from July 10th to the 21st, 1925, John Thomas Scopes, a county high school teacher, was tried for teaching that man descended from a lower order of animals in violation of a lately passed state law. This law was known as the Butler Act. William Jennings Bryant, the Christian, assisted in the prosecution. Clarence Darrow, an evolutionist, Arthur Garfield Hayes, and Dudley Field Malone, the defense. Scopes was in the end convicted. Scopes was indeed convicted for breaking the law, for teaching the theory of evolution in schools. Now, you might be asking, if he was convicted by law for teaching evolution, then how does this allow, how did this trial allow evolution into schools? Well, it was because the defense, Clarence Darrow, spent his entire time making it look as if the Christians, Tom, William Jennings Bryan, was stupid. You see, he presented sci supposed scientific evidence for the case of evolution and asked William Jennings Bryan these questions that really had no answer to. In the end, Will Clarence Darrow presented not a case for evolution, but rather the lack of evidence for the Christians. William Jennings Bryan, however, spent the entire time defending the Christian faith, and he did quite a good job, actually. However, by the time that the media had gotten out about the trial, it had looked and appeared as if the Christians did not know what they were talking about. They didn't know what they were defending. Later, scientific evidence came out about what was presented at the trial to show that evolution, in fact, was incorrect. And daily, there is scientific evidence being presented to show the evidence for the Bible. This evidence was not available at the time for William Jennings Bryan. Otherwise, he would have had a seriously strong case to defend Christian faith and show that, in fact, we do know what we're talking about. There are some common misconceptions about the Scopes Monkey Trial. One misconception that John C. Scopes was a biology teacher that was jailed for teaching the theory of evolution. This, however, is actually not true. You see, John C. Scopes was a football and a math teacher. Now, he had done some substitute teaching in a biology class, and this is actually why he was contacted by the ACLU, or the American Civil Liberties Union. Now, the American Civil Liberties Union was against the recently passed Butler Act, so they wanted to do a test trial. So, they contacted John C. Scopes, who at this time was doing substitute teaching in a biology class. And they handed him a textbook and told him, teach from it. Well, this textbook stated that humans had evolved from lowered life forms. John C. Scopes just followed the curriculum. Now, because of this, he had, because he had agreed to this test trial, they went through with it. And later, Scopes was convicted for 
breaking the law. Ultimately, he did break the law, so that was up to him. He did agree to it. But unfortunately, this court case shaped the rest of American history and the rest of American education. This entire area was completely covered with vendors. You see, with them on all the media about this trial, about the debate between creation and evolution, for indeed, that's what the trial had turned into, a battle of the worldviews rather than did Scopes actually break the law. This entire area completely covered with hot dog vendors and circus performers, and in fact, one guy actually brought a live chimp. He called him Joe Mindy. This entire area turned into a circus instead of a serious court case. The evolutionists presented four different examples of what they believed were missing links between apes and humans. Later scientific research discovered that two of them were human, one of them was an ape, and one of them was just a complete fraud. This evidence unfortunately was not available to William Jennings Bryant as he tried to defend against the evolutionary claims that humans evolved from lower organs such as apes. But we know today that that evidence is completely and 100% false. Some of the other evidence that was presented during the trial that supposedly was in support of evolution were vestigial organs. If you don't know what a vestigial organ, basically it's an organ that supposedly has no purpose. Now, there were approximately about 170 different vestigial organs that they could identify in the human body. And these were brought up during the trial. One of the examples was the appendix. They believed it was just a leftover from one of our evolutionary ancestors. Recent scientific discoveries have found out that the appendix actually aids in our immune system. And the number of vestigial organs that they can count in the human body has gone from that at like 170 now to zero. Every organ in our body has a purpose and was specifically designed by God. In the entire court case, Clarence Darrow presented questions that really had no answer. For example, he asked William Jennings Bryant, the Christian, if he could give examples like if he could tell what the population of China was about 5,000 years ago. Obvious questions that he would either have to guess or admit that he didn't know. Now, about 70% of the time, William Jennings Bryan carefully answered those questions and provided reasonable answers. He provided reasonable scientific evidence for the biblical account. The 20% he did not know, and then 10% they pretty much just agreed on. So... Unfortunately, the, the media began to play up that 20 to 10%, which really sh looked like the, the Christians really didn't know what they were talking about. Um, unfortunately, the word got out, and Christians began to be ashamed of their faith. Now, at, in the, at the end of the trial, it kind of turned out to be a surprise ending. You see, Clarence Darrow, having done his job, having shown that the Christians didn't look like they had any evidence to back their case, he said that Scopes should be prosecuted. Now, this was a surprise move and actually kind of a smart one on his part, legally speaking, because it prevented William Jennings Bryan from allowing, from giving his final statement. In the end, Scopes was convicted of breaking the law and sent to prison. But a couple of days later, William Jennings Bryant, about five days after the trial, died. But not before making plans to build a college known as Bryan College. Now, this, this university actually hosts the reenactment of the Scopes Monkey Trial every year. It's a pretty big thing. So, if you're in the area here in Dayton, Tennessee, come check it out. How has the Scopes Monkey Trial affected America today and our education system? Well, William Jennings Bryant was made to look like a Bible-thumping idiot from Tennessee. However, as more scientific discoveries are made, it has been shown that William Jennings Bryant was 
correct in what he said. That the Bible is 100% true and is 100% scientific. The problem was that at this time, the damage was already done. William Jennings Bryant, because of all the media that played up the 20% that he didn't know the answer to because of the stupid questions that were asked, well, now Christians around the world were ashamed to live out their faith in public. They stopped going to these public meetings that would have a profound impact on our education system. And from that point on, it became lawful for evolution to be taught in schools. This in turn impacted the next generation as they were taught that they were nothing more than accidents from just the cosmos. That they were accidents, that they descended from apes. This is how it has affected America today. This is how it's affected our education. This is why it's important that we get the real scientific evidence out there. Thank you guys so much for joining me once again here on Trailblazers. My name is Ethan Jenkins, and remember to ignite the flame and burn for Jesus. It is truly important.